Welcome to today's episode of Healthful Woman, a podcast designed to explore topics in women's health at all stages of life. I'm your host, Dr. Nathan Fox, an OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist practicing in New York City. At Helpful Woman, I speak with leaders in the field to help you learn more about women's health, pregnancy, and wellness. Okay, we're here with Adrian Van Artsel, who is kind enough to agree to come on to Helpful Woman to talk about your experience as a gestational carrier. Adrian, thank you so much for coming on to Health Woman. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. As I was telling you before, I have uh, already spoken to Adina and Simon Brief, and they actually recommended to me that I speak with you. You were their gestational carrier for their most recent pregnancy for baby Joey, and that you'd be open to talking about it, and that you're a fascinating and wonderful person, and our <laughs> listeners would really love to hear from you. Well, they are too kind, <laughs> but I would definitely like to give any information people are interested in. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I mean, when I spoke to them, they talked about their journey and their story, and then specifically a lot about the pregnancy, and they spoke uh, so highly of, of you and also just the relationship that they and you had with each other, which is obviously a unique relationship. It's not one that most people get to experience in their life in either direction. And I thought it would just be fascinating to get your story and your perspective on this, you know, fill out the entire picture for that pregnancy. I couldn't have asked for a better match. So it really worked out well for us. That's amazing. So just a little bit of background. What, you know, what, what is your story? Sort of, you know, who are you? Where are you from? What's your family like? And then what led you to becoming a, a carrier? I live in Ohio and Simon and Dean are in New Jersey, but I have two kids. I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. And I remember after I had my eight-year-old, first of all, I loved being pregnant. I thought I didn't have any issues getting pregnant, staying pregnant. I had very little morning sickness or any of that. So pregnancy was enjoyable to me. And after I had my son, I was like, this is amazing. And there are people out there that can't have this baby that they so badly want. At that point, I felt like it was something I was going to do in the future. I wasn't sure if I was going to help family or friends, but it was something I wanted to do. So you knew that right away after your first. Yes. And I remember I had a family member struggling with fertility and we did casually bring it up that, hey, if this is something you wanted to do, we'd be open to that. And that didn't end up happening, but we did do it a different way. Oh, and then w when you were having these, you know, these thoughts, these decisions, what was your, your husband thinking with this? He has been so supportive and so on board the whole time. His only concern, I think, in the very beginning was just my health and how safe it was for me and if there was any risks for me. So he spoke to somebody at the agency and they kind of put all his worries at ease. And then from then on, he was completely on board. Right. And so how does that even work? You know, you, you have this thought that you're going to embark on this. And where do you even start? Do you just like call someplace and say, hey, I want to volunteer and 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 then go through a process or what happens? <laughs> so I guess most people do a lot of research. Uh -huh. I, on the other hand, was up late one night. My husband was sleeping. My kids were sleeping. I was up late and I was on Facebook and an advertisement popped up from surrogacy agency. So I clicked on it and I read the qualifications and I was like, I think I fit all of these. So then I filled out like the questionnaire and the next day I had an email back from them. And I was like, oh my, <laughs> I really wasn't expecting a response. <laughs> just kind of doing something. So I got the response. And then from there, we just went forward with it. It was kind of, I don't know if I hadn't seen that advertisement, I don't even know if I would have continued to go forward with it. But because I filled it out, and he responded. And it was just a good time in my life to do it. I had one kid in school full time, my other son was starting preschool, I hadn't gone back to work yet. So it was like one of the best times I could have chosen to help carry somebody else's baby is the status right now that you know, there are, there's a much more of a demand for carriers than there is women willing to do it. Meaning the fact that you, you know, you filled out a form and immediately get an email like, oh my God, please come in. Does, is, is that indicative of the fact that it's hard to find people like you or just, yes. just the nature of the I agency? think there's definitely more parents looking for carriers than there are carriers. Wow. So if you are healthy and willing and able to do it, there's, there's a way to do it, obviously. Yes. And I, I know a lot of people do it without an agency. I don't think I would ever. There's just so so many processes and steps and just legalities that it, just, it was so much easier with an agency and they can help match. And well, how would someone do it without an agency? What does that even mean? Just like find someone like a friend? Yeah, if you have a family or friend or I know there's even Facebook matching groups where people can post 
And so they would hook up that way and then go through lawyers for and doctors. I mean, it definitely cuts down the fees for the parents, but I do think it is a lot more work on both their parts. Right. I mean, when I spoke to Dean and Simon, they they had a similar feeling that they sort of felt there was there was, you know, quote unquote, a right way to do this and just sort of to make sure it's all done right and appropriately and, and thoughtfully and correctly. And they just felt it really had to be done through not just an agency, but a quality one. And the same thing in terms of who the agency selects to be carriers, they wanted to make sure that this was being done right and not, you know, because I imagine it can go wrong. Exactly. Yeah. You hear so many horror stories. And I have to say, even even till the day we started, I was still having like, I hope this goes okay. Like you just don't know how it's going to, well, nobody goes into it planning for it to go badly. So were they the first family that you did this for? Yes. Yes. I had two C-sections with my own boys. So I knew I could do, I think after this third one, I had a a C-section with Joey too. And after this one, I like emotionally, I could do it again, but physically, I don't, I think my health would be at risk. So I wouldn't do it again. So maybe just one. Got it. Okay. And then when you were going through the process, how does it even work that you get, is it that you get selected or you get matched or you sort of get to see different couples? I mean, how does it, how does that process work on your end? I know sort of how it worked on their end. So I think our agency is pretty small compared to a lot of them. The coordinator sent me, he basically, like, I didn't see anybody else's profile, but he sent me their, they wrote about themselves and he sent me that and some pictures of their family and asked if I was, would like to talk to them. And then we set up a, I think it was a phone call with, with the agency and a nurse. And then from there, we just moved forward. Like I didn't have any doubts. They seemed perfect from reading about their story. Right. And what was it specifically you were looking for? Was it more sort of like how they came to this or what kind of people they are? You know, what, what exactly, I mean, cause obviously you've never done this before. How do you even yeah. sort of weigh what are the things you're going to look for? I really did not have a whole lot of disqualifiers. I was open to homosexual couples. I was open to people with children. I was open to no matter what the religion was, there was not a whole lot that I, I mean, I can't even think of anything that was really going to disqualify, I guess, unless I couldn't get a, like, unless we were hard to get along with or I couldn't I didn't really want to be overseas where I couldn't speak the language oh I didn't realize that's an option yes and a lot of couples do it with parents overseas and yeah I wanted to be able to communicate so did did that was one did you speak before you did this or while you're going through the process did you speak to other carriers about their experiences is there like a network or you know a community of people that you could be in touch with I ended up joining a Facebook group and just reading like I know say anything. I would just read through people's experiences and stories and got tips on what to look for and red flags. And then the agency hooked me up with one of their previous surrogates who was actually going to do a second journey. And she lived not far from me. So she came over and we talked. We had a phone call and she gave me her experience and she had a great experience. So I was on board with that. Well, and then what about your your children, what did they think about this? Was it difficult to even explain what this was or were they pretty, you know, go it with the flow? It was. <laughs> I mean, they're, let's see, they were five and seven, five and seven at the time. So we had a couple books that we read and talked about it. And I let them know we were going to be helping another family that really wanted a baby and couldn't carry the baby. So we were just helping and babysitting for nine months. And then the baby was going to go home with its parents. And I don't think my my youngest really even knew I was pregnant until a couple months before we were due. Right. And finally, I think it clicked. I mean, they don't notice the weight gain. So <laughs> finally, he noticed there was like a belly there. So well, hey, what's we that? talked about the baby. <laughs> yeah. But they were, I mean, they would say stuff like, oh, I want you to have a baby that we can keep too. And I was like, well, I'm, we're done. Our family's complete, but other families want a baby. Well, that's, that's your younger brother. Yeah. <laughs> and Adina and I are friends on Facebook. So we see pictures and videos of Joey and I show them and they think it's pretty cool. I mean, it is pretty cool. The fact that they know that their mother did this for another family is, I think, something that they'll always appreciate. And it's going to be something it's, you know, it also teaches them a lot about, you know, kindness and giving that they can't learn from reading it or learning it in school. This is a unique thing, you know, a unique situation they got to be a part of. And it's, an, it's a tremendous lesson for them. Yes. And even if they don't understand it now, I'm counting on 
in 10, 15 years, they'll, it'll click when they start having their own families. Right, right. I mean, I, just my own experience since they're boys, it may take them 40 years to figure it out. <laughs> but, you know, if they were girls, they'd get it a lot earlier. So, okay, what are you going to do? Um, so so you, you're going through the process, and I know, like, logistically, you have to, you know, fly to New Jersey and come home and fly back. Is that, was that a, like very taxing, at least in the beginning end, that you have to go back and forth on, you know, airplanes or long car rides or however you're doing it? We only had to go twice. So we went for the physical screening. My husband and I both went because they had to screen him as well. We went there and I think that was, it really wasn't a long time. We have, his mom lives nearby. So she was a lot of help and she was willing to stay with our kids. And so we were only there, I think one, 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 maybe two nights at the most. So for that, we flew there and back pretty quickly. We were home fast. And then for the transfer, we flew in and there was no waiting. I think we flew back the same day as the transfer. So. Wow. What was that like? The transfer? I, I'm your kids were born or they're conceived naturally or with IVF. They were natural. Right. So this is a, a new process for you in many regards. Also that you're having a transfer. What, what was that like for you just that day? It was really cool. The process was really cool. Like we were all in the same room when they were doing the transfer. They brought this teeny tiny embryo that you couldn't even see in this big old cart. And it was like treated like gold and taken such good care of. And then on, they had a big screen up so you could see them putting the embryo in. And it was just like really amazing to think that that can turn into a baby. <laughs> They were in the room at the same time, meaning all of you in the room together, yes. including these. And was that was that something I know? Because that's not always the case in terms of, you know, with the carriers, the, you know, the surrogates and the you know the genetic parents, and whether they're in the room for procedures or they come to your prenatal visits or they don't. How did you yourself make those decisions or or navigate how you would do that? I wanted them to be as involved as they wanted to be, and I knew they couldn't. I mean, just logistically, they can't come to every appointment. Right. We got tons of ultrasounds, but unfortunately, you can't FaceTime and you can't video those. Right. So I I was always bummed that they couldn't be a part of that. And I felt like it would be hard for them to feel however they felt with their, their older two with this one. We did FaceTime with the doctor, so they knew who the doctor was going to be delivering him. And they came to the 20-week ultrasound, so they got to see that one. Right, which is the big one. That's that's a really good yes. one. Yeah, is that is that typical in your experience with being on the Facebook groups and talking to others that the the carriers are so open to having the parents with you at visits? Cause, I mean, there there are privacy issues. It is you know it's it's your body, it's your pregnancy. Things might come up that are private. And is that something that typically happens that someone is so open as you to have them come, or is that unusual? From the ones I read, it is very, pretty typical. Most people. If you're doing it, it's because you want to help and you do kind of want that relationship. So to not allow them to see that part of their baby's growth is, I don't know a whole lot of people that haven't let them in. And I mean, I think it's amazing. I mean, it just speaks to the whole idea. I think a lot of people are mistakenly under the impression that, you know, surrogates or carriers, it's sort of like a job. That, I mean, there there is a component that it's like a job and there's, you know, there's contracts and there's, you know, fees and this, uh -huh. okay, but that they're sort of doing it because this is their line of work and they're very sterile about it. And I think that what you're describing is something very different. You're describing almost like a calling that you want to do this for somebody and you're, you know, willing and happy to do it. And I think that that's a very different mindset. And what you're saying is that that's really, in your experience, how most people approach it. Yes, I would say. I think if you're going into it for for a payout or for anything other than trying to help another family, I don't think it's even worth it. I mean, right. And they do a psych evaluation, so I think they try to screw, weed out the people that are not doing it for the right reasons. But I'm sure there are people that do. But I don't even. I would say for the most part, that's not the case. Yeah, and I think that that's just a misconception that some people have. That's why I just think it's so important to hear your perspective, and that from your, you know, experience and your understanding, that your perspective is is more the norm. That that's how most people who go into this are doing it, which is so encouraging. I just think for humans <laughs> that there are people. There's so many people out there who are willing to sacrifice themselves and do this for others who are complete strangers at the start. Did your family and friends have the same? feeling about this that you did? Were they like, oh my God, this is amazing. You're like, awesome. You're so cool. Or were they like, what are you doing? You're out of your mind. And, you know, because I imagine there's some of each, but what was sort of the general feeling in your 
you know, your inner circles and then maybe your more peripheral circles who don't know you as well? I had overwhelming support. I don't think I had anyone really question my motives or question why I would do that. I think most people said that's amazing. I know a lot of people were like, well, what, how are you just going to give the baby away? And I think I never felt like it was my baby. I always felt like I was just carrying somebody else's baby. So I never felt like an emotional attachment that giving it to the, his parents was going to be difficult. But I think a lot of people, when they think about it, that's their hold up is how can you just give that baby away after you carried it for nine months? Right. I mean, there is definitely some like intellectual disconnect there, you know, it's sort of the way that we think about pregnancy and delivery, but it's also a unique circumstance where you know, going in, like, this is their baby. I'm like, yes. like you said, like you said, your kids, we are basically like sitting, we're, ho we're holding the baby for X amount of time for them. And that's, I just, I just think a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their heads around it. But if you can, it makes, it obviously makes complete sense, but it's just so unusual that that's why people yes. are sort of like they're, they're, they have a short circuit, you know, in their brain when they try to figure that out. Yeah. I totally get why people would question it. Just for me, it was never an issue. Even from the very start, I never felt like I was going to struggle with any thing. And I never did. Even after I had him, there was never any emotional issues to deal with from him going with his family. Yeah, I was going to ask specifically about emotions like during, like, you know, during the pregnancy and after delivery, is it a feeling of this like joy that you're helping? Or is it, you know, a little bit of sadness that, you know, you're doing this not for yourself? Uh, you know, I imagine there's a mix, but I'm just curious, what were the what were the range of emotions you went through over the course of pregnancy? I think I was so content that our family is complete and that I don't want another baby. I did not have really any sadness there. I mean, it was exciting. It was fun feeling him grow and sending videos. And then after the fact, I was, I was fine. Like I, <laughs> like I feel bad thing. I would didn't like miss it or miss anything, but I was so ready to not be pregnant anymore by the end. Cause we spent the summer being hugely pregnant at my son's baseball games. So. Well, as, as, as an obstetrician, I could tell you, it's a very common feeling for women to not want to be pregnant anymore <laughs> towards, towards the end. Yeah. It is, it is a very, very strong natural urge to not want to be pregnant at the end of pregnancy. And it was just freeing to know he's being taken care of by his parents and I can just focus on myself and recovery and Yeah. What was the day of the delivery like? You're having an operation, right? So that's obviously a big a big deal for you physically. But the same thing, you're there, your doctor's there, your husband's in the room, the briefs are in the room. What what was that experience like? Because you've obviously never had anything like it. Yeah, that was really cool. I was worried leading up to delivery that the briefs wouldn't be allowed in the room because they had said from the very start, you can only have one other person in the room. Mm -hmm. They were said from the very start, Jason can be, my husband can be in the room with me. But I, that didn't really sit well with me. I was like, I feel like the parent, of, one of the parents at least should be in the room when he is born. So I was, Jason was fine with that. He said he would sit in the waiting room if need be and one of them could go in. But luckily, I don't think we found out till the day of because I think it was up to the anesthesiologist who could be in the room. Yeah, for whatever so reason, they have, they have control over the personnel in the room. I'm not sure why. It's the same way in our hospital. They, they're, they're the gatekeepers to the people in the room. Yeah, and we didn't know who that would be, so we couldn't even kiss up or do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to just cross our fingers on the day of and hope. And so they put us, I mean, the room seemed huge, but they said it was a small room, but they put two chairs down for them. And I could see, basically, I could only see them. So I could see Adina and Simon. And then my husband was sitting at my head and he was, he, I think, guess he started taking a video as they were pulling Joey out. And that was just, it was, it was amazing to watch it, but to be able to see it, have it on video, it's like, that's why you're doing it. They were just so emotional and happy and thankful to see him come into this world. Yeah. I mean, when I spoke to them, they, they were just so, um, obviously they would have done whatever was best for you. And, you know, they, they would have been comfortable being outside if that's what it had to be but they were so thankful that they got to be there and it was you know it was exciting and surreal and just also you know just from her previous experiences a little bit of like ptsd you know going into an operating room again but such a, a mix but they are so thankful that they were there and they're thankful to you guys i mean the fact that you're you know you're talking about you know your husband jason saying he would stay out so one of them could be in i mean just you know how giving that is under the circumstances it's really 
it's really impressive. Or maybe he just really didn't want to be in there in the first place. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've been, I've, I've seen that before. Yeah. So, calling him out. I think here. he was a little hurt when I said I'd rather have one of them in there. But, <laughs> well, but stay yeah, open the boys. So it's fine. We got there. this. We need the briefs. We're, we'll, we'll go have the baby come home. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I wow. think it would have totally, t- I don't know. It just seemed like such an important moment that they should yeah. have been there. And I'm yeah. so glad they could be in there. Yeah. I and th- I'm sure it would have worked out if they weren't, but I am glad that, that moment solidified that it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And I mean, I think hospitals don't really, you know, they don't do this so much that they have protocols in place and exceptions to rules in these circumstances. You would think it would make sense that they should, but it's just sort of hard to come up with every circumstance and how they're going to do this in every single hospital. So it's sort of understandable why it it took so long to figure that out, but I'm glad it did work out. That's amazing. And then yes, I know that, too. you know, you said, and the Brees told me how you guys, you do stay in touch and, you know, on Facebook and you see pictures of, you know, their kids and they see pictures of your kids. Is that something you expected to happen to have this relationship that lasted even beyond the pregnancy? I was hoping for it. I was definitely hoping for it. I wasn't going to push it and I didn't want them to feel like they were obligated to send me pictures or give me information on how he was doing. I felt like I was doing this to give them their baby. And if they wanted to stop communication, that would have been fine too. But I'm glad we continued it and I'm glad I can watch him grow up through pictures and videos. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I mean, you have, you have your own beautiful family and then you get to see this other family who's in a different part of the country from a totally different place who your your roads crossed and now you're linked with them you know basically forever and they're they're obviously awesome they're a great family and when this was happening on their end just so you know because so you should know when they let everyone know what was going on that they're going to have a baby and that they had a carrier in Ohio and they were going through this I mean everybody was just like so excited for them you know, all their family and their friends, the whole community. It was just amazing because they're such wonderful people and they're so loving. And some yeah. of us knew, some of us didn't know about, you know, her history and, you know, what was going on, just that they were going to have another baby. And the whole event in our community was just awesome. And you gave that to them, basically. Yeah, gave and it I'm to so all glad of us. it was accepted because I know oh, yeah. Yeah. the religion was in question. At, like, is it acceptable? Is it not? And Right. But right. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, had con- they had concerns and it ultimately wasn't it, it's not a concern. But yeah, this is something that's not, you know, anything that's new is not going to have hundreds of years yeah. of you know <laughs> rabbinic literature on it. So it's sort of like, well, you know, and, and but it was yeah, everyone was very encouraging, very supportive from top to bottom. That's what they described. And that's what sort of my recollection was, at least from my vantage point. And it's just amazing. That you get to see that from your end, that you're what you were trying to do. You did. You know, they told me how awesome you are. And I'm thinking, well, you know, well, yeah, she's awesome because she did this. But in fact, just to to hear your level of, you know, altruism, your your level of just concern for others and how giving you are, it really is above and beyond what you would expect even from someone who's who's doing this. It's it's pretty impressive. It's not for everyone and not everyone agrees with it, but it has been an amazing experience. And when you look back, it was it's just like a blip in time, but it's changed their life forever. And they now have this beautiful baby that they can grow. He's brought so much happiness. You just see how loved he is and how much happiness he brings everybody. So it's like just something so, I don't want to say it's simple, but it's like something I could easily give. And I'm glad I chose to do that because I could have easily not. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and no one would have Obviously, no one have faulted you for not doing it. No one has said anything. Before I let you go, I'm just curious if if there are women out there who sort of feel like you do. They had you know pretty good pregnancies and they're thinking about this themselves. What would you recommend to them if they're just interested in it or curious about it? How they would go forward? It'd be the same way you did it. Just contact an agency, or is there like are there books to read or good blogs or you know how would they get information that would be helpful to them in making this decision? I actually didn't read any books about it, but there are a lot of Facebook groups if you just search surrogacy, and I joined those. And yeah, just talking to an agency and seeing if you would be a good match. I think if you've even considered it, it's worth diving it's worth at least giving it a try and seeing if you would be able to do it because in the end it's, the result is amazing 
but I know I had a my husband's cousin. She's after I did it. She said I've always thought about that and just never, never did it. And now she's actually pregnant right now with surrogate baby. Oh my god, that's so, so cool. Yeah. So, so once you, one person does it, it's like it kind of just a trickle effect. I had a friend that contacted an agency, but her health just wasn't where it needed to be for carrying a baby. So, yeah, I think it, it's something. You know, if you don't know anybody that's done it, you kind of go in hesitantly, but I would definitely look into it if it's something someone's considered. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. And just the fact that since you did it, not only did you help one family, but others are looking at you and considering doing it and it sort of has a snowball effect. I mean, it's, it's almost like, you know, like a metaphor for, you know, life. If you, you know, do good things, people will take your example and do it themselves. And it's, this is on a much, you know, bigger scale than that, obviously, but it's just that same idea that people who are giving are infectious and others see that and want to emulate that. And it's, it's really, I know I'm, I'm gushing here, but I just think it's really cool. And I'm, I'm just so impressed and excited to talk to you about this. I'm so appreciative that you're did this and obviously that you're willing to talk about it so openly. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't talk about it a whole lot. <laughs> not people that haven't seen me since last, I mean, a lot of people that have been new in my life, I don't, it's not like I just bring it up. So I don't talk about it a whole lot. But I do have people that they were there when I was pregnant for nine months and they're asked how Joey's doing and I can pull up pictures and let them see if he's doing great. He's happy and he's got an amazing family. It's awesome. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for coming on uh, to the podcast. I really appreciate it. I know my listeners appreciate it. And it's just such a great you know, compliment to the story that we got to hear from Adina and Simon. And so thank you so much. And thank, thank you for you. what you what you uh, what you did and how you're inspiring others. Great. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for listening to the Healthful Woman Podcast. To learn more about our podcast, please visit our website at www.healthfulwoman.com. That's H E A L T H F U L W O M A N dot com. If you have any questions about this podcast or any other topic you would like us to address, please feel free to email us at hw at healthfulwoman.com. Have a great day. The information discussed in Healthful Woman is intended for educational uses only. It does not replace medical care from your physician. Healthful Woman is meant to expand your knowledge of women's health and does not replace ongoing care from your regular physician or gynecologist. We encourage you to speak with your doctor about specific diagnoses and treatment options for an effective treatment plan.